yo yo no maniacs welcome to the show this afternoon this is nomad live all bears all the time in conjunction with sports zone chicago and the super back sean sierra yeah yeah got my other trustees up here the canuck coming in live from canada and my guy the bishop and we'll just call him that from now on everybody call him the bishop please so do that in the chat for us man and while you're doing that guys let's do a little checking in let's tap in man let's see where everybody's from we're going to start doing that more on a regular basis so we can have an idea of who's who and where you're from, man. I think that's just really good, man, to know where people are coming in from. It's surprising all the time when I see some of the uh, areas that people are, uh, are watching the show from. It's absolutely amazing to see some of the places that we're reaching. And so I appreciate you guys, man. And again, thank you for watching the show. And we have a very special guest here today, man. People have worn me down to the nub about this guy man and i like his content as well i really enjoy some of the things that he does on his channel man really really glad to have uh adam mason here with us and we're going to bring him on in just a second but uh let's give some pleasantries around man let's tap in with the uh viewers right quick kids yes 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 holy smokes we got a show for you guys today uh no maniacs thanks for, for representing in droves the chat starting to pop off and get heavy and, and awesome. Um, you know, roll call, roll call, roll call. Let us know where you're at and what, what, where, you know, where these Bears fans are at. We're gonna go through some awesome stuff here today. We've got an awesome guest waiting, uh, waiting in the wings in the back. Uh, you know, in the in the green room, he's snacking on uh, a, a lobster and steak back there. So we'll give him a minute to to chow down before we bring him in. It bring him in. Um, my guy, the Bishop. What are you saying, Bishop? Hey, hey, hey! What's going on there? No maniacs and sports zoners. How y'all doing today? We gonna talk. We gonna talk some Bears football. It's so good to be in the house today. My guys on the panel. What's going on, fellas? Are y'all ready to chop it up? Super back. What you got to say, brother? Sports zoners and no maniacs unite. That's what I'm talking about. Thanks for tuning in. I'm excited to talk to Bears football today. It's gonna be a good show. A uh, great guest. So it's gonna be fun. A fun, fun time. Coming at you from the South Burbs, man. It, let me just tell you, let me give you a quick story. It hurt my soul that when I had to renew my driver's license. And for the first oh, I time, in say, when I, when I of, up with donuts. Uh, <laughs> it hit for the first time in 50 years, I did not have a Chicago address. I was hurt. It took me a minute. But I got over it. That's all right. I Coming to you from you the did. South Burbs, baby. <laughs> I bet let's you get did. it. Let's bear down. <laughs> all right, man. Hey, let's let's not okay, keep I'll be fine. let's not keep our guests waiting any longer. So we're gonna bring on Adam right quick. And uh let me see here. Put him on stage. Adam, how you doing, my man? Glad to have you on the show. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me, and I really appreciate being here. It's, it's really excited to be on your show. Hey, it's our pleasure, man. Glad to have you on, man. Um, so the thumbnail goes like Caleb, uh, he absolutely captured the uh, imagination of the Bears fan base yesterday with his pro day. And, um, you know, we, we went down, I went down the line of what could we do with the number nine pick? Because it's, apparently we're going to probably draft him probably 90, 99% sure about that. And um, what do we do at the number nine spot with a limited uh, uh, amount of draft capital? We've got four left after Caleb. And if they want to capitalize, uh, you know, there might be some scenarios that we could talk about as, as to what they can do at nine. So let's just start there. Yeah, there's there's still plenty of options open for the Bears. Now, assuming we go Caleb at one, which, like you said, 90, 99% we're doing that. The, the Obviously, even if all the fans haven't come around yet, the Bears brass are enamored with him. They were all there in his pro day. I mean, it, there was tons of support, and I've never seen – uh, a player show up to a pro day before and maybe it's happened but i don't remember seeing that so keenan allen showing up there was just to me kind of like hmm made me wonder at least have they have they said something to keenan and of course we know keenan lives there and he's probably in the process of getting things switched over and so it was easy and he's he's known caleb so that was interesting but at nine there's lots of options and this team is not filled out yet and that's that's the biggest reason i think fans might have a little frustration is because the draft capital is is low now but I think a lot of fans need to realize having one and nine, our draft capital is not low. It's, I mean, no other team is in is such an exciting point as we are that we are probably walking out of here with two blue chip guys. Whereas other teams that are picking first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round, 
those fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh rounds pan out rarely. They don't really come to be your top guys. And even then, second, third, fourth rounds, they don't always work out either. And it's it's developmental. But two top ten guys, that should be a home run right off the bat. Um, as far as what I think we'll do, I think there's a couple players there that if they're there, we absolutely snag them no matter what. And the way things are shaking out, they could end up there. And those are players like I don't think offensive tackle is necessarily a need for us with Braxton. Uh, and you guys have probably seen we already have a top 30 visit uh, scheduled with Kieran. I can't say his last name. The guy from Yale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would see him somewhere around 75. I can see that being something that the Bears are kind of looking towards, maybe a tackle at 75. But if if Joe Alt's there at nine, how do you pass up? Because he is special. Like he's he's a really solid impact day one improvement from Braxton Jones. And while Braxton isn't bad, you want to have those top 10 type of tackles to take you to the playoffs. So really, to me, the biggest lacking needs on this team are quarterback, number one. That's become our biggest lacking need now, obviously. And that should be filled with the first pick. And then X receiver. And a lot of people don't think we have a need at receiver because we have Keenan Allen and DJ Moore, which are clearly two top – I mean, they're wide receiver ones, both of them. But we don't have an X receiver. And after those two, the depth is really not there. And they're both on – as of right now – expiring contracts one within this year and one within next year so we really got to start learning to build not just from the trenches which we're doing but build our wide receiver room to be able to be sustainable long term and so i really i'm really hoping romo dunze is there at nine i don't see it happening but if he is i want to snag him at nine for sure well and you guys let me know in the chat man because we we uh, how, let me know how you feel about uh Mr. Mason doing a mock and kind of illustrating for you guys what uh, what he might do at the nine and moving down. Just give me a thumbs up and a, um, thumbs up or thumbs down if you want to see it because uh, he agreed that he illustrate that for you guys. But hey, man, I, um, as far as tackles go, man, I, I've watched them. I, I probably watched that group just as hard as I did the uh, receiving group, which I think is the, are the uh, top two position groups in the draft in my opinion it's two position groups in, in the draft by far in my opinion and the tackle that i like and i when i bring up this they, they get kind of mad at me in the chat because but they don't realize that that uh, darnell wright was a starter when he came into uh tennessee at left tackle and performed well you know illustration of that just go watch the alabama game in 2021 it's a natural position for him the uh the draft is so to me right tackle heavy it would do them good to maybe consider i don't know if they actually would flipping him to the left side and maybe getting one of these right tackles like i think i think um talise fuaga i think he can play any side left or right but he is i've never seen feet like that for a guy that big i mean i'm thoroughly impressed with him i don't know how much work he did on him but wow i think that dude is going to be a special talent yeah i can see talise fuaga being special i just think joel alt is is up here and every other tackles not quite there. And with us not having that need, I really see it. Now, a lot of, a lot of, I shouldn't say everyone, but just because there's many. such a, yeah, many, there's such a, a top tier wide receiver class this year. And we have such a need for it. We focused on those top three and people would be surprised if I tell you, I have Brian Thomas in mind ahead Ooh ahead of Malik Neighbors. And I don't know if other teams have that too, but Brian Thomas is special. If you watch his tape, and, and I go into the stats and nerdy analytics thing, that's kind of why I've kind of gotten a, a little bit of a reputation with that stuff. But Jaden Daniels had one of the highest passer ratings in all of college football. He had a very special year. Everyone knows that. He was a Heisman for a reason. And you look at Malik Neighbors, and his pass rating when targeted was right in line with, with Jaden Daniels. But Brian Thomas was actually 10 points higher. And to, to have someone at 152 pass rating when targeted is is unique, and it's it's crazy. It doesn't happen that often. It's the highest that I've seen, and I haven't looked at everyone, but highest that I've seen in college football. But what's, what separates him is his separation. He separates better than anybody in the game, even better than Marvin Harrison Jr., in my opinion. I think Marvin Harrison Jr.'s moves are better, which will translate better to the NFL level. But Brian Thomas running a 4-3-3, 4-3-4, 
if he's if if everyone else is gone at nine, I can see Ryan Poles doing a Darnell right from last year, where everyone said that there are not many that I didn't see that said Darnell was being drafted too high, but he likes Brian Thomas, take him at nine. If not, I'd love a trade back if all those other guys are gone. Trade back to 13, 14 before the Colts, because the Colts are going to take wide receiver. So trade back 13, 14, get an extra second rounder and take Brian Thomas because he's right there with, I mean, it, to me, it's Marvin Harrison Jr., 1A, Mar, uh, Romo Dunze, 1B, and Brian Thomas right behind them. And Malik Neighbors right there too because he route runs too, but he's just not an X receiver like we need. But I don't see us taking a different tackle if it's not Joe Alt at nine. I see that happening in the third round. That's just my opinion. This is the way I've seen it and viewed it. He could end up taking Fuaga. He could end up taking – Olu Fushanu, he could take one of those guys at nine, and I, I would be the one that was wrong again. <laughs> but, yeah. but to me, I see that being with. He made the comment at the combine that this is a deep tackle class. Like he specifically made that comment at the combine, which was offering information. Like it was just being offered up, and to me, that that meant that he's probably going to go tackle in the the third or fourth round. Well. I, I man, you you are so people kept telling me, man, Adam Mason thinks like you know, man. He's you, I mean, I thought the world of Brian Thomas when I seen that film. I mean, the world of him. And I remember talking to our producer, C Sharp, you know, privately, and he we were talking about we did a receiver class, the top 10 receivers. And uh, you know, when we got to him and discussing him, I was like, man, that might be the steal of the draft, actually. Man, I think this cat is uh he's He's got some special qualities about him. I know, you know, Malik gets all the attention and Marvin Harrison gets all the attention and Odunze. But I think that is absolutely the steal of the, uh, especially the receiver class. I mean, I think this his upside is tremendous. That, a guy that size running like that is ridiculous. Yeah. And, and so uh, I do I do agree with you on that, man. But uh, let me let my guys in, man, because they I know kids at, right off the top has a few things he wants to speak to you about or, or ask you about. So we'll let him go. Yeah. So, Adam, I was hyped when, when you know, we a couple of our guys, you know, our, our no maniacs were like, you know what, you guys should get, you guys should bring Adam Mason on the show. I was like, you know what, I'm watching Adam. Let's bring him on. Let's do what we can to bring the man on. And then you skipped over Malik Neighbors. So now I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> I'm, I'm a... <laughs> well, I'm not saying Malik is scrub. He's just I, I see us needing the X receiver. That's the biggest I, reason. I, and when Malik you when no you clarified scrub. that, I agree with you. Like when when you clarified the X specifically, I agree. I like Brian Thomas Jr. quite a bit too. Um, I just there's 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 three receivers, and I, I'm adding one from last year that I that I've scouted over the last two years. That separation was was just insanity to watch on film and neighbors is one the other one is tank dell from last year his ability to separate um just blew me away last year and the third guy is it for me is is uh xavier worthy those three guys just I don't, I don't, you don't see DBs around when the ball's coming down, the ball's coming down in a situation where they could just, you know, reach out an arm and there's still not a human being anywhere near them. And that's a beautiful thing. Now, Brian Thomas has a lot of that too. So I, I got to agree with you. And then we get to, to see him at the actual combine and he tears up some, uh, some good old speed numbers. We, we, we get to see that he's, he's not a joke. He's a real dude out there when it comes to that speed piece too. So um, I, um, I, I don't – I wouldn't mind if we get him. I'm actually hoping that we do. I kind of have him over Odunzi for the simple reason because I, I feel like Odunzi and neighbors are going to be gone by the time we get to nine. And it's not really a talent thing or, or anything else. It's just I don't think we're going to we're, we're gonna have access to Marvin Harrison Jr., um, Malik Neighbors, or Odunze. So who's next up to bat? I really like the guy who's next up to bat. So I'm with you. I think I think the idea, the best case scenario, is to trade back to a 13 or a 14, get a second round pick, grab you, grab yourself a Brian Thomas Jr., and then hopefully get something else by way of pass rush, maybe in the second round. But that's me. Bishop, what are you saying, bro? Well, first, Adam, thank you for joining us today, man. I've been following you as well, and it's a pleasure to have you on the panel today. 
Um, and also, I want to thank you for identifying that we need an X receiver because I've mentioned it on some previous Important. shows, and I've gotten a little I've gotten a little pushback from my fellow panel uh, brothers here. But uh, with that being said, that was probably um, me. Yes, it was you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, in all honesty, I, I, Brian Thomas Jr. is high on my list as well. Um, I I would love for us to be able to take that ninth pick trade back and get him then. Um, more importantly, I listened to what people say, and I caught during an interview that they did with Caleb yesterday how he's how he has mentioned uh, oftentimes he likes to be able to get, get the ball out quick and get it to his ex-receiver. So I found that to be quite interesting, knowing that we need an ex-receiver as well. So... Uh, thank you for identifying that and, and holding, keeping my back on that one because, like I said before, my man Keds and I, we go back and forth on that, you know. But now that we have identified that, we can move on and let the super back chime in. <laughs> Adam, thanks for joining us, man. We appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> I think, Brian, I, I like uh, Thomas because here's here's the thing. It's a psycholog- Maybe it's a psychological thing, but he knows how to be a number two. You know what I mean? He's already had, you know, and I'm not saying that's not a bad thing. All right. I mean, hell, Elshon Jeffrey was a Pro Bowl number two receiver. All right. And the thing and the thing about it is, you know, he's ready. He's already played with Malik neighbors. Malik has gotten most of the accolades and the awards and and not saying that Thomas didn't. He just didn't get as much as Malik. And I think it's it, it would be a good fit for him. I do say I do agree with some of my guys. If we can trade back from that nine position. And then, like you said, maybe get another second rounder and 12 or 13 um, and then pick him up. Man, that'd be great. That'd be really, really good. And, you know, one of the things that I like is I was saying, you know, we get a stud receiver. You know, give me your thoughts on moving DJ DJ to the uh, to the slot and getting him in motion and having him, you know, trying to cover him, have defenses try to cover him with him in motion coming off the line. It's, it's bad enough when he's static and he's stationary. It's going to be a real son of a gun if he's in motion. And you got to try and stop them. Yeah, the nice thing is with all those guys, Keenan plays a ton out of the slot too. I see yeah. Keenan starting the season as the slot, and and he DJ does out. Best work out of the slot, as a matter of fact. Yeah, but DJ last year, the couple games where he did get pushed into the slot, he he changed the whole dynamic of the team with that. You saw yes, the team did. absolutely play differently with that. So the big thing is we just need more options. We just we just and. Look at look at what we have with Shane Waldron's twelve personnel. Just adding Gerald Everett too. There's going to be so it's going to be so fun to watch Bears football from an offensive side for once. I don't remember, and I'm in my forties. I don't remember ever watching a team that has this much stacked at least at the top of it. We don't we aren't deep at wide receiver and tight end, but having those two at tight end, Cole Komet and Gerald Everett, and then having if nothing else, DJ Moore. And Keenan Allen, even if we don't add another wide receiver, this year will be fun. It'll be interesting to see how we do extensions and what happens. But I've I've never seen the options that we can have with Shane Waldron calling his 12 personnel sets and and having the type of room that we have already, already the changes we've made. We should be a threat for sure. I think we I, I think we have to go back to literally 99 and 2000 for the Rams uh teams. And you mean they're they're Ricky um uh I'm Ricky Pro is the, the last last one, but you had Azakim, Ricky Pro, you had uh, Tory Holt, and you had the um, um, oh goodness Isaac Bruce, and then along with you know Marshall Falk. I mean that's a hell of a of a squad, and I think once we get a receiver, I mean, and I'm not putting anyone in those categories yet. I mean Keenan Allen's great, but um, you no, know, I guess DJ Moore too. But we we have we're at that at, at that limit where we got four. I mean, and you could even throw Cole Komet in there as a top 10 tight end. We got literally five, five studs at all at all skill positions. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. So the big thing, and I'll pick your guys' brain. I know I'm on your show, but I'm gonna pick your brain because I just hear it so much <laughs> as I'm as I'm going through it. So many people see edge as a need, and they they fill that number nine slot with an edge. But I don't think a lot of people have done the deep dive, and I've done this a couple times on my channel. I've shown it with the Tez effect. Demarcus Walker is not a scrub. Um, he is not a. He's not a. Oh, sorry. He's not a starter. Like he's not. He's not your big power force hitter. And his stats showed that when when Tez wasn't here, he wasn't the lead guy. But when Tez came over, Demarcus Walker's stats were among the best 
at starters on the other side of Tess. He has eight sack hits or hurries. That's a metric that I use, so I'll, I'll use a better terminology for that. It, he has a sack hit or hurry on once every eight plays, which is among the best at defensive end. So while I see that we need to improve defensive end long term, it's not a deep need that we have this year, but so many people are stuck on taking edge at nine. And now it, it's all going to come down to Ryan Poles and Ian Cunningham and how they see a guy. And maybe they see a guy that's a, a Brian Burns or a Montez Sweat, and they say, we can't pass up on him. And that's a whole different story. Best player available. But as far as our pure needs, I don't see it like other fans are seeing it, where they see we have to take edge at nine because Montez Sweat with – so here's another one. Demarcus Walker – before Tez got here, was missing 30% of his tackles, which is awful, god-awful. When Tez got here, that number dropped down to less than 10%, and which is among the best at defensive end. So Tez creates such an impact on that other side that Demarcus Walker then can play his role better, collapse the pocket from his side, and things just become so much cleaner for everybody, which is why Gervon Dexter played so much better at the second half of the year too. So what are your guys' thoughts on nine with defensive end? Because I'm just not seeing it like other people are proposing out there. I'm not seeing us taking an edge at nine. I just don't see that happening. Chris is, I'll tell you right now, Chris is somewhere rolling over in his grave, our producer in the back. I'm not <laughs> dead. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> he is dead set on getting an edge, and I see it the same way as Adam. I said that for months, man. I don't see that being an immediate need, and I don't think the edge class is – anywhere near as talented as some of these other top uh, positions, I think. And I'm not saying that they don't have talented edges there. They do. Um, what I'm saying is, as in, in a comparison to some of the other needs on the team, I don't see that being an immediate uh, uh, something that we needed to do. I think other positions like the X receiver, the offensive lineman, I think to me that jumps ahead of the edge because you can get down there a little bit later on and find some decent guys. And plus what he just explained, about the uh, the Marcus Walker effect on, I mean the uh, Montez Walker effect, Montez Sweat's effect on DeMar him too. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Chris, yeah, Chris I, and me basically going to have the same take on this. So since you pulled yourself in, C Sharp, you want to go? Well, you know where I'm at it. Team building one on one, inside out. Um, you know Walker Walker is a sufficient player, and I know the numbers you just mentioned, Adam support that it's just that in this game you know we have injuries and we want to be able to create pressure in waves now i, I know you guys are speaking about wide receivers and, and another my other take is you know premium wide receivers don't win you championships okay so good defensive lines do good offensive lines do and I'm just really of the thinking, you know, especially as deep as the wide receiver class is, I love Brian Thomas. I think Brian Thomas is the second best receiver in this draft. And I think he's the most dangerous receiver in this draft. Um, he's just not as refined as, as Marvin Harrison Jr. But, um, you know, I'm all in on at nine. If nothing else happens, uh, I actually don't know if Jared Verse will even be there. Uh, but, you know, Latu and Jared Verse are the guys. Latu, of course, has some some uh, medical concerns, even though his medicals have shown up to be good. I just look at Jared Verse, and I just see a almost a Khalil Mack type of player. And at nine, to me, you just don't pass that guy up. Right. Um, go ahead. I know you're going to cut me off. I'll no, go back to my, I'm going you, back to my room now. Oh, bye you bye. get the virtue signaling your behind off, man. How about we How about we get this thing Isn't cooked that? up? For, uh, let's get this thing cooked up. for. Let's see what Adam actually does, man, for the court of viewers, man. Let's get him ready there. Go with, ahead. With, with what you just said, though, that's, that's where I say we would take an edge at nine is if – and this all comes – everything's going to come down to how these guys analyze it. Brian Poles and Ian Cunningham and company – if there's someone there at nine, if they truly see Leatu Latu and Jared Verse as, you know, that next edge that's going to be the home run, you know, guy that you can't miss on, they'll take it. I mean, they're going to take the best player available if that person in their mind and their analysis, if, if they've scouted this and they see it that way, they will take a guy that they think is absolutely going to be a superstar in this league. Adam, who would you think that guy is if it were to be one that you circle? 
As far as which position? You're talking about edge? In edge, yeah. Right now, I think it's Leatu Latu. And I'm not as worried about the the medicals with everything that I've seen come out on that. I mean, those types of injuries get healed up, and he played extremely high last year. Uh, I was high on Leatu Latu. I made that in fact one of my first videos I made was on him <clears throat> and another one I was on Darius Robinson. Uh, he and Jared Verse would be one and two to me. Uh, a lot of people are, are really high on, on Dallas Turner, and I can see why. But I really like Leatu Latu the most. He's my favorite edge in this class. I don't disagree with you, Adam. I, uh, especially from a production standpoint, I mean, Latu has shown, you know, that he he is he's a special player, and so I would not be I would not be disappointed if they took Latu. Actually, Latu was my number one edge for a lot of the year, but the more I mean, Verse picked his play up so much the second half of the season. Uh, he just the more I look at the guy, the more I like him. So I wouldn't be I wouldn't be uh, disappointed with either one of those picks. Dallas Turner, uh, some of the other, other guys. I mean, they're good players. I just I think they're a level below the first two that we mentioned. Hey, hey, really quickly, Adam. You know, I don't know how much uh, Buffalo Bills homework on that defense that you've done and the kind of dynamic Eric Washington could be bringing to the table and the types of players that he likes along his front line. I don't know how much work you've done on that, but I could see him him having a hand in in the guy that they brought. Because like the guy uh, was his name, Jacob Martin. Mm -hmm. That normally it doesn't look like a guy that you know under Eberflus's, uh traits would be the guy that they'd be looking for because he's just not big enough across the front. But um, Eric Washington's fronts are so hybrid, and they have different variations of what a four three should look like, and I love it. But he has different types of players with different you know, traits to them. Um, if, you know, I don't know if you consider, you know, some of these guys that probably I wouldn't have considered Dallas Turner as an option for us minus um, Eric Washington, but I definitely see him as one, you know, an option right now because of Eric Washington. Jake Martin is fascinating to me, guys. No. I want to see what they're going to do with him because he's very much a Yannick Nagakwe type of player, which leads me to think there was big influence there from Eberflus bringing in Jake Martin. But he did convert from that outside linebacker to defensive end last year. And his numbers at defensive end were just per snap. I mean, he, he's not a starter, but per snap. I mean, it was pretty, pretty elite. But I haven't watched his tape yet. So I want to, you know, from a stats point, from an analytical side, I, I'm intrigued. But I don't see him being more than obviously our defensive end three or four, probably four at this point. But Dominic Robinson's got to go. So if we pick up an edge, I, I completely understand Robinson being on the chopping block 100%. But Jake Martin's fascinating to me. I want to see – I want to. Uh, there's a lot of players I'm going to watch when OTAs and, and obviously preseason happens. And Jake Martin's one of those guys I'm going to want to watch right off the bat and see what kind of impact he has because he is smaller bodied like Yanni, 242, I think was his weight. But how he – his moves and how he gets to the ball, and he's going to be in a prove-it mode. It's going to be interesting to see what he does. Well, before you get before you get cooking here, Adam, um, they are demanding to do these super chats, and we appreciate the uh, contribution. So we will honor that real quick and let kids take over. No, Matt, before you guys get started, are we doing? You guys want to do a full seven rounds or just an abbreviated draft? I'll let Adam call that. Just do an abbreviated one. Three rounds, good. Yeah, that's good. All right, do the super then. Fine. Hey, no maniacs. Love you guys. Thanks for sending in and supporting. Um, our guy, D D DG Daryl Gibson, original no maniac. Here's what he's asking Poles cannot risk drafting a left tackle at nine. Period. If that rookie gets up, gets injured, big problem. And uh, I, I, well, if if the rookie gets injured, we still have a swing, right? We've we still got Braxton as, as swing. We still got Larry Borum as swing. Probably not the end of the world in that scenario, to be honest with you. But uh if we're talking about alt, very specifically, sort of as 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 Adam has laid out, or even Olufushana, like which is very unlikely to happen. Um, but if it does happen, if those two guys were there, um, as much as I personally don't want a left tackle, I really wouldn't blame him for taking them. Hey, to be quite honest thing. with you, Daryl, and, and thank you for the uh, contribution, bro. Um, if Keenan Allen weren't wasn't thirty three, about to be thirty three years old, I would say you know I'd be on one hundred percent with you on that. I think this tackle class is that strong, and I do think 
not taking one is a big risk. But Keenan Allen is a 33-year-old receiver, you know, so I'll just say that in consideration to what you said. But go ahead. If anybody else wants to touch that, feel free. All right. Let's go. Let's move on to the next one. All right. Our guy, FFG Style. Two dollars for my FFG. Thanks for representing and supporting as per normal. Do you see a do you see double trade down to get Jaden and Thomas? Hmm. I'll let, I'll let, let's let Adam answer that. <laughs> Adam, what do you think, dog? What do you think? So on my channel, I've made a couple videos of Jaden Daniels because here's the primary reason, guys, and I've always said this. My my channel was not a Justin Fields channel. My channel is I want to explore everything. I want I don't want to be stuck in lemming mode where you're just following what the media says, following what everyone says and, and just having to, to go with it because they're saying it. Now, I don't think my analysis of, of Justin Fields was wrong. He is an ascending player who's improving every year. I showed that through the stats and analysis that got showed on NBC Chicago. He's, he's improving. And I hope he does that in Pittsburgh. He's gone. So that's, that's past this. Well, the next thing was I, I made a video on Jaden Daniels because he's very similar every single year in college he's improved and he's progressed and he's showing those things I like to see. And I really, really like the things out of Jaden Daniels. I'm seeing, I really am impressed with him. I don't see a scenario at this point with where we are that we trade back and take Jaden Daniels unless Washington is okay. So two things have to happen. The bears have to say, okay, I really like what I see in Jaden Daniels. This is a 2020 type of draft where we've got Justin Herbert and Joe Burrow, and either one are going to be good for our team, and we like it. We like both of these guys. And then Washington has to see it differently, and Washington has to say, nope, it's Caleb Williams, nothing else, no one else will do. They've got to be willing to come up on draft day and give us this year's first, next year's first, 2026's first, couple of picks this year, a second, a third. It's not going to happen, guys. It, it's just not going to happen. That's the only way we're going to let go of Caleb Williams. And if that happens, I would be okay with Jaden Daniels. I, I would be okay with any rookie that this brass, that Brian Poles deems as good enough to take us into the season and feels like they can develop into the next superstar. But I don't, I don't see a scenario where that's happening at this point. I don't see us not taking Caleb. That's why I say I'm 90%. I want to be sold on it. I want to still do the dives. I want to watch the pro day next Thursday, next Wednesday with Jaden Daniels. I want to watch everything that takes place. And, but at this point, the pro day for LSU, I'm going to be more interested in watching um, Brian Thomas than I am Jaden Daniels. So, and that's just where I am. I really think we're taking Caleb stacking those two up would be kind of fun. Jaden Daniels at two with the hall and Brian Thomas at nine or 13. That would be fun to see it happen. I just I don't think it's likely at this point. How far back do you think we'd be able to trade to get Jaden Jaden Daniels? Because people, I mean, Drake May's still up there. Because if you take that double dip, you go one or two to Washington. You know, tons of people are coming up to get going to offer for that number two spot, that number two pick. How far back do you, if that happens, is it only five or six? I don't think you risk it. If you're sold on one of those two guys, you don't risk coming out of two. Somebody else could take Jaden Daniels ahead of you. If you're seeing it that way, other teams are going to see it the same way. So if you're trading back, it's a one-time trade back. Now, if you really don't care who the quarterback is and you're trying to build the rest of the team, which is not the direction they're going or else they wouldn't have traded Justin Fields, then you can trade back as far as you want. But if we trade back and that's the decision is we're sold that there's 1A and 1B, you don't risk going back farther than two and still wanting your 1A and 1B because somebody else could easily come up and take Jaden Daniels at that point. Mrs. Right. O'Leary's cow will kick over the lantern again if they don't take one of those two. <laughs> How about you? Any, we'll be on fire. You got any more supers? Uh, uh, I, I do, and I'm I'm completely lost in left field with who, who Mrs. O'Leary is and what's up with the cow. <laughs> but in, in, in any event, I, I'll try your <laughs> will. So what, I, I'm a, oh, this is a U.S. thing. Sorry, it's a, it's I guess. Chicago thing. It's a, it's oh, Chicago, Chicago thing. Chicago thing. All yeah. I okay, you guys gonna you guys gonna explain that to me later on. All I know is Thank she you. probably uh, cooks mutton or something. But we'll get into that later. Seinfeld she, reference, she, nice. She she got a Seinfeld. All right, I, I love Seinfeld, so we'll figure this out. A King Book of World, <laughs> two dollar super chat. I like the direction. Here, here, here we go. I like the direction of the team sustained success and you know what i i have to agree and i'm going to touch on a little bit of what what adam was just saying honestly adam you sounded just like me yesterday uh with the you know 
with the exception of a bad Godfather impression included. But uh, <laughs> I, I've run a couple of I've run a couple of mocks over the time, and I, you know I was able to get myself Jaden Daniels, Malik Neighbors, and Brian Thomas Jr. in a few of those. But those were many moons ago. Things have changed. And I just don't see anything like that happening at this point. It would take a King's ransom to make them really get off this whole Caleb Williams thing. So um, I think that's who we're zeroing, zeroing in on as well. All right, man. Let's let, let's go ahead and let Adam start cooking. But before we do that, Chris, if you don't mind a quick station ID so we can get that out of the way, then we'll get let, let Adam start cooking. The best. Chicago Bears content anywhere. You catch Nomad Live pregame one hour prior to kickoff and Nomad at night postgame and every Friday evening at 7 p.m. Central on all the most popular streaming platforms and only on the Nomad Network. That is right, you guys, man. Keep up the subs, keep up the subscriptions and the likes. Do it for us over here at the Nomad Network, as well as uh, Sports Zone Chicago. With my guy, Superback Greg, over there. Make sure you <laughs> do that for him, and also, yeah, yeah. and also our guy Adam. Man, go over there if you haven't already. Please subscribe to his channel. The guy does great work. I admire it because when I see numbers, I'm like, Neow! I'm running the other direction, but he runs to him, and so I appreciate that part at least. I like everything he does over there, but that part in particular kind of um, um, pulls me in because that's the stuff that I refuse to even look at, man. But I do appreciate that part of your content for sure, Adam. But before be before we go any further, man, let's just let you get cooking and see what you do here, man. Let's, let's show out for the uh, viewers here. All right, Mr. Mason, are you familiar with the uh, Pro Football Network uh, simulator? Yeah, I don't use that one very often, but, but rock it up. I, any of these, I'm going to preface this, any of these aren't realistic. PFN, PFF, all of them, <laughs> they're – they're not realistic, but but let's rock it. Let's have some fun with it, and we'll see what it does for us. Unrealistic, and thus why they're fun. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So here, with the first pick, uh, the Bears have several trade offers. Uh, there's Vegas 13, 44, 77, first and second next year. New England 3, 34, 68, first and second next year. Uh, there's the, the pick we're probably going to deal with, 2, 36, 40, 67, and a first next year. Mm. And uh, Denver's offering 12, 76, 1, 2, and 3 next year. Minnesota's offered 11, 23, 108, first and third next year. Uh, is there any question about which one you want to take? Well, I'm not going to take one today because I don't want it to be more. I mean, it's so controversial. <laughs> it's still, it is, it, it's 90% we're taking. But if you look at that one right there, Washington, with that package too, 36, 40, yes. 67, and a first. If we get to draft day, because they can't offer a 26 first. Well, I think actually they can. You can. Three, you uh, can they can three now, first. yeah. And to, but if they offer a, another first on top of that, if I'm Ryan Poles, and like I talked about, they deem Caleb Williams as 1A and Jaden Daniels as 1B, and they think they're going to end up being uh, Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert, then I am I'm taking that in a heartbeat. Number two, number 36, number 40, 67, and two future first, I'm taking it. But yes, I don't yes. want to. I don't want to for this. I mean, what? Actually, I kind of do, do just because then it would give do us it. the extra second round pick. <laughs> oh, we give it. us two second round picks. Yeah. Do it. Remember, do we're it. doing a show here, Adam. Do please, please, please do it, Adam. Do it. Whatever you want to do, Adam. But I will I just... say this: we could add probably one hundred to that, and they'd still take it. I just um, got to preface this by by saying I had to trip. I had to coax these guys into not taking this trade the last time but here they are saying take the trade take the trade well, it's kind of funny here's the thing so i want everyone to listen to this i want to take the trade just so we can toy around with the second round idea of it but i don't think this is going to happen i just don't i don't i think we're taking caleb it's 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 done i think we're 90 plus percent there so i i don't want this to be that type of thing where everyone starts rioting in the streets and saying let's take Jaden Daniels let's they, they will yeah that, that. yeah you will you will you will hear about this later on Twitter Adam I'll just put that out there but by all <laughs> means let's have some fun the disclaimer has been put out there this is not a real mock we're just messing around 
Well, mocks so, aren't real to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> mocks aren't real to begin with. That's Thanks for putting mock. that out there too, right? So, like, fans don't go crazy on Twitter. Leave the guy. How out. dare you, Adam? How dare you, Adam? No, <laughs> Dude, it's, you know they're coming. <laughs> Take the it easy, okay? Hey, hey, hey go, go for it, man. Don't don't let us get in your way, Adam. Go ahead. Hey, you smack the accept on that, then we're good. Okay, so I am gonna, I'm gonna say, guys, Caleb is a better prospect than Jaden, hundred percent. There's some things about Jaden's that I like. I think he anticipates better than Caleb, but his velocity, I do not know right now if Jaden Daniels' velocity of his ball coming out of his hand is going to translate, which is a big knock you saw on Justin Fields. He's better than Fields, but Caleb, once he makes the decision and he whips it, I mean, it's it's. Go go watch the tape. It's once he, it's like he's flicking it. It's just it's just neat. It comes out and it's very Pat Mahomes esque, and that's why people do that stuff. He's not Pat Mahomes. I'm not a fair comparison, but he is a better prospect than Jaden Daniels. He is. I, he is probably. I've seen a lot. I've seen them all, man. But a natural. I mean, absolute mm. natural at a, as a thrower of a football as I've seen, man. It's. It's almost Aaron Rodgers, like when I look at it more and more. It really does. He it's just natural, man. It's he makes the easy stuff look easy. And, and you gotta appreciate that, you know, given the situation we're in, man. So we, I won't I won't get in the way any further. Just just let you go ahead and do what you're gonna do. Here. So is this a skip? Let's do it. Let's skip. Let's accept it. Let's do it. Let's cause oh, some, you wanna, you yeah, let's cause some controversy. It. Let's let's All burn right. the place down. <laughs> Hey, you want to add one on there? We can get another one if you like. No, let's just say that we, because since they won't let you add a 26 first, let's say this is a scenario where they give us a 26 first rounder as well. They're leveraging their entire future. We're accepting that for three first rounders. Well, a swap of this weird and then two future first, two seconds this year and a third. I would take that deal. Okay, we'll accept it. Hope, hopefully Washington doesn't take J.J. McCarthy. <laughs> All right, there's Caleb. We're getting some offers here for number two. Got two offers, one from Minnesota for 11 23 108, first and third next year. And ooh, Arizona wants to give us four a 27 and a 35. See, Arizona's seeing the same thing we're seeing. And Could once we've know. done this, I can't come off of one B. There's no way I can yeah. accept less than Jaden Daniels. So I'm going to reject anything they're giving us at this point. Okay. We have to oh, have a quarterback a that we see as one A and one B. Okay, I get it. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't mind it. seeing that cow kick. All right, here we go. We're taking Jaden Daniels at number two. And I just have to keep saying it because people are going to do this. I don't think we're taking Jaden Daniels, guys. <laughs> okay, we've seen McCarthy go off the board. We see, let's see who's went Joe off. Alt, Malik Drake Neighbors. May, Marvin Harrison, McCarthy from Olu, Joe Alt, and Neighbors. We're setting at nine now, and we do have a couple of offers here. Uh, for nine and seventy-five, Jacksonville wants to give us a seventeen forty-eight and mm -hmm. second next year, and here's interesting: the Colts wants to give us fifteen forty-six, one seventeen just for nine. Yeah, I'm not taking anything when I see Romo no. Dunze there. I, if if Romo Dunze is there at nine, guys, he's he's the best contested catch this year, and the way he can high point, we haven't had that. His separation isn't as special as neighbors and as Brian Thomas. But the way he can just muscle the ball away, I really see things in Odunze that a lot of other people aren't. I'm taking Odunze with this. I'm not you considering Odunze? anything when I see him. I'm with you, Adam. Okay. Very, very Alshon Jeffrey-esque. Yeah. We'll yeah. take it. He would be an impact player for sure. All right. Here we go. We pick again tomorrow. Brian Thomas went 12. Wow. Denver. Wow. Mm-hmm. First was gone also. There's my boy Jack. I want Jackson Powers Johnson so bad. It's just not going to happen now. Which, yeah, which is why I didn't understand the trades and that, and don't understand the trade back. All right. Tomorrow's coming gone. We're at 36. We've got an offer for 45 and third next year from the Saints. And we have an offer for 60, a second and third next year from Buffalo. Nothing there blows me away. Nothing there is going to help us today. Uh, do you need to look at individual positions or no, you see your guy? I'm looking there. Guys, I love Tyler Newbin, but we're so stacked at safety. We're not taking a safety. But Tyler Newbin, to me, is one of those guys that you hear generational. Like, he's not generational, but you hear that term. 
he's a guy that I would I would fight for so hard. So if, if if I'm seeing 36 and 40, I'm still taking him if we didn't make the offseason moves we already did. But I, I really like Tyler Newbin a lot. Okay. So and he's a Chicago Lens boy, very own. man. Yeah. Chicago Lens very own. St. Charles North. Yes, sir. So um, you're, you are going to take him or Darius no. Robinson is in your future? Nope, not Darius That's Robinson cool. either. I like Darius Robinson, but to me, the center position is so important to fill with only a one-year uh, deal with Shelton and even him not being a top-tier guy. Zach Frazier, to me, is right behind Jackson Powers Johnson. Zach Frazier's uh, sacks, hits, and hurries allowed is one of the best in college football, and a lot of people don't realize it because Jackson Powers Johnson is so dominant. I'm good taking Jackson or Zach Frazier here at 36. I really am. And a lot of people feel like we can get him a lot later, but I think other teams are going to see him the same way. And I, okay. I take him above Graham Barton. I take him above everybody else but Jackson Powers Johnson. So if Zach Frazier's there to me, I'm I'm taking him. All right, Zach Frazier, you are now a Chicago Bear. All right, Graham Barton went, Kwame Lester, Tyler Newbin. We got a trade offer. Ooh. Tampa, yeah. they see somebody they like because they're off the 57 and a first. It's Michael Pence. Probably a lineman. Um, I'm not sure, but no, it's Michael Kansas Pence. City is offering a 64 95 in the second next year, and they won 40 and 122. Any uh, questions on this one? Mm-mm. Yeah, I didn't expect that. Uh, <laughs> if Tampa's giving us a first, I mean, <laughs> that's blue chip possibilities, especially when next year's class is such edge heavy. I mean, there's, there's reasons by the decisions I make. I always try to have reasons. I always try to analyze things. And, yeah, we've gotten another first already from Washington. But this year's class is the wide receiver class to me. Next year's class is the edge class. Edge class. Sure, yep. the, the year mm-hmm. after to me is the quarterback class. 26 is truly a quarterback class. So if I'm looking at that and we have Demarcus Walker coming on an, an expiring contract and depth to the point where we only have – uh, Dominique Robinson, who shouldn't even be in the league, in my opinion. Sorry, Dominique, if you watch this, but I just I am not hot on him at all. And we got an opportunity to take a first, and we've already acquired this from trading back once. A first is what people want to get by trading out of two. We didn't sure. have to do that. And now we get a first from Tampa. I'm I'm hitting accept on that as fast as I can. All right. We will drop in 17 that. spots, but getting a future first in an edge class that we can steal at an edge in the first with that, I'm I'm good with that. All right. Tampa really wanted a Deesa Isaac. And I like a Deesa Isaac, actually. Not for a first. <laughs> Not for a first. That's why I say yeah, these things aren't we're, realistic, we're, though. I don't see that happening. I like Patrick Paul a lot, too. Yeah, but you know what, Adam? Right. I will say Man. they're as random as the real draft can be. Yeah. No, uh, it's see, true. Yeah. It, it can definitely be as random. Okay. Um Buffalo has offered us a hey, kids. Our guy Peyton Wilson went to uh, to Dallas. They they went to um, oh Van Der Esch. He's replaced. Yeah, oh no, that's a problem, bro. Yeah. Imagine Peyton Wilson and and uh, Micah. and and Micah together on the same yeah, team. Yeah, oh, that's no. crazy. Uh, anyway, we oh, have sixty uh, and two forty eight for our fifty seventh pick. Uh, also, we have uh, Minnesota's offers. 108, 129, third, fourth, and fifth next year for 57. Anything here interesting, Mr. Mason? Well, it's interesting how much they're willing to give up. You're going too far right. down. This class is known as being like one through 80, being elite talent. So I don't want to drop out of from 57 to 108. So we're going to stay where we are. All righty. Who we see in here we love? Ooh, a couple of them. Cameron Kitchens? No, I'm looking D tackle right here because. Stop virtue signaling. Let him go. I yeah, I'm asking the question. Are you still in the virtue signal, man? Get leave man, man alone, man. Man, don't get muted. leave him alone now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at this and what's still on the board there with Leonard Taylor and Michael Hall and Chris Jenkins and but even right down be past where you are. I like Xavier. I don't think Xavier Leggett lasts that far, but I really like Xavier Leggett. A I lot. do too. Yeah, I love Leggett. What picks do we have after we trade it down? What am I sacrificing uh, if I go another wide receiver? Will, we have three picks left, 57, Ooh. 67, and 75. Dang. Oh, and Braden Fisk is still there? I think he'd be gone by now, too. Yeah. Ba- BC get... kid? Boston College kid? Mm-hmm. A Florida State kid, Florida I mean? State. He was. He Sorry, was same, yeah, he transferred. Same colors. 
I love his motor. <laughs> Arms are a little short, but man, that dude never stops. Arms too short to box with God. What do you guys think about Here's... Michael Hall? Um, Three, four. Michael Hall is a little small for me. Not my favorite DT. Three, four guy, man. Not in my opinion. Yeah. All right, I'm. I... Tell you what, I like. Cam Kitchens is sitting there. Oh man. I know it's, 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 Kitchens. It's, Kitchens. Um, his he ran really slow at the combine, but I still think he's a great player. I don't. I don't. Man, he plays Forget faster. He plays Forget faster. the combine. His 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 yeah, actual tape, tape is insane. Was... Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, 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 he's he was my number one free safety. Yeah. He's show he's me, just got instincts all day long. Show me who's left with offensive tackles. Oh, tackles. Let's see here. It's Rosen Garden, Armada no. J. Yeah, we're not we're not going there yet. Yeah, it drops we're off. Right, we're, we're right there around the guy you were talking about in the green room. There, yeah, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't paying attention to where he's listed on here. Yeah, no, no, but I would see I would see us targeting him 60s, 70s. There's some quality guys. I, I I'm going to go defensive tackle here. Um, it's a need. We don't have a fourth one on the team right now, so it's a need for us. Man, I'm I'm not sold on Leonard Taylor, but I. Oh really? I like. I'm not sold, but I I don't mm. dislike him. I really like Mason Smith too, and he's way down there, and I don't understand it. Mm, looks like a Greek god plays like a Greek salad. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually good. I'm gonna have to buy that one. <laughs> just just give me a nod. We'll do. <laughs> Chris has copyrighted this. Um, yeah, uh, I, I like Dwayne Carter here too, but a little bit further down, you could probably get him at 67. Yeah, no Jenkins, no D, uh, Michigan D, D Jenkins, uh, Chris Small. Jenkins is he, he's got the lineage. All right, I'm little... gonna shake, I'm gonna shake things up and I'm gonna shake it. This is not what they should do, but I'm I, there's no way Xavier Leggett's there. I'm ah, taking Le, yes, Leggett. yes, I love right. it. I love it. Too. This, love this it. wide receiver room is the most stacked love room it. in the NFL, and then we're going to see who's left at 67. I'm going to go ahead and push it at him because I it. love Xavier Leggett. Me too. He's on a mission too. Chris wasn't going to give you mm -hmm. not one second to think about that. Trust me. I minute. didn't. You <laughs> see how quickly I hit that. All our defensive tackles are going now. They're all coming off the board. Nope. Uh-oh. Oh, you we got Braden Fisk. We and can add, we can add some picks. And remember, guys, we're only doing three oh. rounds. So uh really quick, some... let me let me shout out one one large individual. Shout out from London, man. Thank you for coming. Hopefully, uh you like the content and subscribe. Shout out from uh to London. One one large individual. My bad. Go ahead, Adam. I'm not taking that one. Really? No. I like I like the top 80 in this draft. There's just too much high end talent. I don't want to be dropping down further. Same thing here. Not dropping okay. out of it. All righty. 67 is too valuable. Ben Sinnott's not going to go that high to me, but I, I see him coming higher than what other places project him in the fourth round. That's not happening, but I see him later. And we need a tight end three, but we're stacked at the top of our tight ends. I'm going to go Braden Fisk here. I, we need there a defensive go. tackle. I like Braden there Fisk, and there's go. no way he lasts this long. So if he's here in the at 67, we absolutely just steal him. All right. Mr. Fisk is now Chicago Bear. And Jenkins went so around. You got your DT here. either way there, Adam. It worked out. All right. And our final pick. Um, you even considering that? <laughs> no. I didn't think so. Too valuable here at 75. All right. I'm going to go with Kieran Aguijabi. I know on on this mock simulator they're not thinking as high of him, but I really, I really think this is where we're targeting anyways at seventy five. Offensive tackle, yeah. Thank you, one large man. Appreciate you. That's final. That's final. Yep. I I think I see him answer? being right there competing <laughs> with Braxton for the job, and either way we've got a deep swing tackle with whoever wins that job. So. All right. You got well, at least I finally know how to pronounce his name. I don't know if I'm right on that, guys. I oh, okay. Well. <laughs> well, do, do we have anything? We don't have anything left. Right? No, no. That's here. that's that's it. Um, We're only doing three. So we letting it. We letting it uh, finish out. And we'll we'll get to I'll, that. I'll post. Uh, I'll post that in just a second, gentlemen. So, I like it. 
I like it. You know, it's going to be a lot of people arguing with you, man. I wouldn't post that on social media if I were you. But. Well, if you do, you got to have a huge disclaimer that I said we're taking Caleb Williams. <laughs> <laughs> he has to put a disclaimer anyway. This is a, this is not real. <laughs> this exactly. is make believe. Yeah. Yeah, this didn't really happen. <laughs> You're a jerk. Uh, You're an idiot. You're a clown. This is not real. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I, I actually I actually like what you did, but the truth is, man, they they are dead set on taking this kid at number one. Yep. And, and 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 in fact, no matter how nice the trade offer is, you know that may be on the table as we speak. I think in the end they have to draft him, and and demand that you if you really want him that bad, you're gonna have to offer offer more than that. We may consider doing a pick swap. But I doubt it, man. I don't know what you think about that, Adam. But I don't think they have any choice at this point but to draft Caleb Williams. No, Caleb Williams is going to be a bear. I mean, that's why I've said 90%, 99%. It's it's happening. People just need to start wrapping their head around it. And a lot of people have given me crap over that because I was so Justin Fields pro. But it uh, doesn't mean I was wrong with my analysis of Justin Fields. Nope. As the team shifts and we go a different direction, I'm not stuck on Justin Fields. I'm I'm adapting with it. Caleb Williams has to sell himself to me, but so would any rookie that we take. Any rookie is going to have to sell themselves to me and prove themselves to me. And we're, but any way you slice it, we have the most premium draft capital to take two blue chip guys here in the top of the draft. And it's just we're we're in such a good position that it's a bad time for people to be so negative about what's going down. There's so much positive to be excited about with this team. I will say this, Adam, in this particular instance. Uh, the biggest come uh, takeaway from this is the uh, extra first round pick we picked up. Yep. Yeah, and this isn't so, showing in our scenario. We're saying Washington has to give us a 26 first round pick too, but the simulator won't show that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys got to read this one, Mike Davidson. <laughs> Y'all got to do the law and order. The following is based off this <laughs> fictional <laughs> bit. <laughs> good. good one, Mike. Nicely played. Very great. Nicely played. <laughs> All right, man. Ding, ding, ding. Listen, ding, man. I I enjoyed I enjoyed having Adam on the show, man. It was a it was a blast, man. Yes, dude. I just want you to know, anytime, anywhere, you got a revolving door for you over here at the Nomad Network, man. You're welcome to come back anytime you want. I really do appreciate you for being here, man. You want to give give any shout outs and any pleasantries on the way out of the door, man? It'd be great. Very cool. Thanks, you guys. Seriously, such a fun time just chopping it up, talking about Bears football. The biggest thing I want to say is, Bears fans, we are in such a good position. The draft is going to be fun, Hold no matter on. who we Adam, take. One second, I think you got a question before somebody got yeah, you. Go ahead, Lord Lord Crimson. You want to go ahead and take that? What? Um, I'll read it out. Uh, at Adam, what do you think about a lack of NFL QB experience on the staff um, and the roster to develop a rookie QB? I was kind of shocked that we took Mark Rippon. I was kind of surprised by that if this is the direction we're going. But I do understand as well, this is just rumor stuff. This is stuff you look up. Mark Rippon is very respected in the quarterback room. I don't expect him to be someone that competes at all for a job. He'll probably be a practice squad guy. But from my understanding, in the quarterback room, doing film and discussing football, he's very intelligent. Um, I'm not worried about having Tyson Bajan as QB2 with lack of experience because Shane Waldron is very respected. And this, this is an opportunity for them to put their staple on a rookie. So I'm not, it would, it would be ideal to have someone come in with an Aaron Rodgers to teach them and to train them. But the reality is when you're taking a first overall pick, that's not the situation that happens. You don't have like a Pat Mahomes coming in behind Alex Smith to learn like a Jordan Love coming in behind Aaron Rodgers. You don't have that when you're taking first overall. So does it concern me? Not really, because that's what happens when you have the first overall pick for a quarterback. This is just this is just what happens. So no, I'm not worried about it. Uh, I just really have to trust that we hired the right people and that Shane Waldron can really do his best to pull this out. All right, before we let you finish doing your pleasantries, man, I think I had a question for me, kid, somewhere in there. Someone asked me something. I think it was FFG. It might have been. No, no, no. That wasn't it. No, I think it was FFG. I think someone asked me. Um, oh, here we go. Here we go. F Nomad, do you do you 
do you really think this draft, um, this draft with with be worth less than just having Caleb from a team perspective? Oh, I see what he's saying. So he's looking at your draft actually, and and just sort of saying, you know, he's comparing the hall to Caleb. And what do you think? Yeah, I, I, you know what? Be quite honest with you, I won't back away from this, man. I, I think they could have really laid in this roster. They could still really late in this roster deep with some talent if they traded down. I think Jaden Daniels is, I mean, I'm not going to say he's Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams is is a, he throws the ball better than uh, Jaden Daniels, quicker release. Um, but I think you can do well with Jaden Daniels equally. And I think, um, you know, in my opinion, I think it's worth entertaining the idea of really laying your roster out for the next five to 10 years and kind of trading down. But that's my opinion. You know, I, I think I don't think the draft is worthless now. I think it's just um, you could be getting a whole lot more out of the situation if you really wanted to, if you didn't uh, zero in on one guy. But I understand why they're doing it, though. And so if that answers your question. But uh, uh, we, we, we got to get ready to get out of here. Keep it. Right, well, no, really quick. I just was going to say this. You know, the, the unfortunate part to all of this is how everything got built up to this point. Had they not used certain words like generational and everything, I don't think it would be such a big deal if they were able, if they were to trade back. But such the emphasis on Caleb and being quote unquote generational and compared to Mahomes in terms of, you know, certain certain aspects to his game is what's made this a difficult task to be able to say, you know what, we feel strongly in our evaluation based off of our scouting reports that we can trade back and still get a very, very good quarterback that makes us competitive for years to come. But because of everything, that's what I think is pretty much got them in a, in a, in a situation where they can't. Well, I partly agree with that, and I don't have much of that I could disagree with. But, Adam, if you want to finish giving your pleasantry before we get out of here, man, that'd be great. Yeah, just thank you, guys. Uh, those who haven't checked out my channel, check it out, uh, Bear Down Sports. You can just type my name, Adam Mason, you'll find it. Um, Bears fans, be excited. This is such an exciting time to be a Bears fan. I don't think we'll ever have two top ten picks again. So no matter what happens, even if we stand pat with these four picks, this roster is built right now to compete. And it's going to be fun to see this season, this offseason unfold into the preseason and into the season. Don't be afraid to be hyped. So many people are, are having some negatives right now because the way things happen. But whenever you whenever you take a star that's improving and that the team loves and he gets extracted from the team, that happens. So just bear down. That's that's the name of my channel for a reason. Look forward with a purposeful direction. Bear down. Because there's so much to be excited about this team. I'm I'm super stoked. And if if Ryan Poles, if Ian Cunningham and company think Kerry Joseph and Shane Waldron can work with one of these quarterbacks to make that make them the next great, then I'm all on board with giving them a shot to do that and taking this team and being excited behind them because there's so much potential here. So I enjoyed having you guys have me on. Uh, really appreciated it and look forward to future interactions whenever they may come. Ditto, brother. Ditto. Thanks, oh, Adam. Thank you. Yeah, man. Adam, thanks a million for joining us. It was uh, it was fun chopping it up. Fun, yes. fun. Uh, you know, running through a mock with you and getting an idea as to to sort of where your head's been at over this off season. And to be quite frank, um, your head's been very in a very similar place as to mine, almost across the board from what I've seen on your channel and and you know, where I am now. Although I will say, you're a little bit more. You know, you're definitely a little bit a little bit more pro Justin than I've ever been. Um, love the guy. I just you know I just kind of stop and 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 look at the hall and and dream of the super team, and that's you know we saw a little bit of that today. Um, long story short, I think we're a little Dreams. bit beyond that. I think you know yeah no no doubt there, Keith. I, I just I just think Brian Poles has sort of seen the writing on the wall. He believes in the team he's built and is building. And it's now zeroed in on whoever that QB is going to be um, moving forward, right? And it looks a heck of a lot like Caleb Williams in that respect. Man, that uh, that passing motion you mentioned, I've talked about it before. It's just literally a flick of the wrist, and that ball jumps. And, uh, you know, that that's something we haven't seen in Chicago perhaps ever. ever. No, Cutler has <laughs> right? like, going crazy. May, Cutler I was going to say maybe Jay Cutler, crazy. maybe. 
maybe <laughs> he Jay. Right? Like, they they have like nobody. Well, he, he had a lot yes, of them tools. Oh, oh, yes, he he just didn't have his kind of tools. Give it to you, uh, Keith, man. Let, let Sean yeah. give his pleasantry. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, he had a lot of that. But uh, in any in any event, thanks for joining us, Adam. Awesome having a show with you today. And, uh, you know, looking forward to future shows in, in the same vein. No Maniacs, thanks for representing with us. Um, you know, big numbers in the chat today. Just about 200. Loving it. Like, share, subscribe, and keep the uh, you know, keep supporting the channel as per normal. Super back. Throwing it down to you, my friend. Thanks, Adam. We appreciate the time uh, spending with us today, buddy. Uh, man, it's going to be exciting. I agree with you. You know, we have to move on, unfortunately, but that's that's life. All right, that's life in any aspect. And you know what? We wish we wish Justin well, and we're moving forward with us. And you know what? If it's Caleb, if it's Jaden, if it's Drake May, if it's JJ McCarthy, Michael, whoever it is, all right, we, we, we support them 100%. They're, they're going to be playing for our Chicago Bears. And uh, I'm looking, I'm really, really looking forward to the, the talent, especially if he trades back with the, either the one pick or the nine pick or both or whatever to get more picks. Uh, we're going to get a lot of, we're going to get some quality players this year and in the future. And it's going to be really, really fun. You said it, you said it right, Adam. And, you know, it's, it's a really good time to be a Bears fan. So, you know, let Poles cook, let him do what he does. And if you didn't like the thing, don't worry, trust him. We, we, we love people and we trust people. Sometimes they don't always agree with them, but we trust them. All right. And I think we need to trust him. And there's really nothing he hasn't done to this point that has caused me to not trust him. OK, I mean, just because he made a decision I didn't like doesn't mean I don't trust him. So trust him and see what he does. And, and we could be hoisting a Lombardi trophy in in uh, three years, three to five years. Man, Keith, you no know, maniacs. Sports Zoners, thanks for joining us. Adam, thanks again for, for, for being on the show today. Do appreciate it. Love chopping it up with you. And um, other than that, everybody, just have a great afternoon. Hey, thanks, everybody, for showing up, man. Adam, one more time, man. I definitely appreciate you coming on, jumping in here with us, man. Again, that door is open for you at all times, man. Love to have you back, man, and do this again anytime. And to all the guys that joined the chat, man, all the ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for being here. If you have not liked and subscribed, please do so much. And uh, make sure you do for both uh, Sport Zone Chicago and over there, Adam Mason's channel, which is, again, Adam? Bear Down Sports. Bear Down Sports. So, once again, appreciate you guys. Love you all, man. But before I got to get out of here, I always got to leave you guys with these famous words. Love, peace, and hair grease, y'all. Bear Down. Yay, peace. Yay. Bear Down. Boom. <laughs>